Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Ent Guide. This guide is going to go over anything that you need to know about fighting Ents, whether you're looking to actually make some money with woodcutting, or you have a Slayer task to deal with. I'm going to start this guide by discussing how Ents work, and the general setup and strategy for the woodcutting guild Ents, and then I'm going to move over to the two wilderness spots and what your strategy is looking like over there. After that, I'll close out with my general thoughts on Ents and their money-making potential. An Ent is a big tree monster that when you kill it, you can chop noted logs off of its body, which is pretty magical if you ask me. Ents are level 86 to 101 combat, and they can be safe spotted very easily, but it is worth noting that it's not a skilling only moneymaker. Just having a high woodcutting level is not going to get max pace here. You're going to need some decent combat stats and combat gear. If you're going to be doing the Ents in the woodcutting guild, you do need 75% Hosidious favor just to get into the guild, and even though you only need 60 woodcutting to get in, higher woodcutting does affect the logs that you're to get from Ents, so you do want like 80 plus before starting these. That way you're getting up to magic logs at least, and you're not going to be chopping them super slow. You'll find that the XP here is not that great either, so needing a high level to get started and not getting great XP from it really doesn't make it a great method for making money while training woodcutting, but it is a way to make money using woodcutting. The dungeon in the woodcutting guild has a ton of Ents in it and a bank chest, making it a pretty convenient place to fight them. Plus, there's an altar outside, so you can recharge your prayer at any time. You really don't have to go through any uh, prayer potions. For the gear that you bring in the woodcutting guild, you can go all out, unlike you do in the wilderness spots, but you don't really need max gear at all to get quick kills on these Ents. They are mostly weak to range, and it's very easy to safe spot them with a ranged weapon. So I suggest using range, but even throwing down like a whip or a dragon skimmy with your best melee gear is going to get some easy kills. I will be going a little bit more in-depth on the range setup, though. For the on-screen picture, I'm featuring a higher level setup, but not max gear since you do not need max gear by any means, but I'm going to go over each slot. We'll start with the helm slot. Best in slot is Arma, but Arma's a bit overkill. If you have the funds for overkill, or you just have Arma stuff already, that does mean it's a faster pace, so overkill is not necessarily a bad thing either. Crystal Helm is a fantastic option since it has a good prayer bonus on it. I'll be rocking the Blessed Dehyde Coif, which is a step down from the Crystal Helm, but still gives a good prayer bonus. The Archer's Helm is probably the lowest that you should go, but if you can't manage to get your hands on one, there's still a Snakeskin Helm that is cheap and can help. For your cape slot, the Ava's device is clearly the way to go. The assembler has a nice range strength boost on it, making it a very big upgrade over the accumulator. And then if you only have the attractor, you could at least bring that. But 50 range is really like the toughest requirement for getting the accumulator, so you might as well at least get that grind done. In the next slot, the Necklace of Anguish is definitely your best option. Zenite Jewelry is a bit pricey for a mid-level monster like an Ent, but if you're going to be spending any cash on an upgrade, Zenite Jewelry is always a great option. The Anguish has a good range strength bonus, which again is going to increase your max hit, making it very worth getting. The Fury is still a solid second best slot, and you could survive with the Glory here. Your ammo really does depend on what weapon you're using, so we could just meld those sections together. The Toxic Blowpipe is the top option for blowing through kills in general, but... It's really expensive to use a toxic blowpipe, and I guess there is some word of a possible nerf coming in hot, but in general, it's mostly about the fact that it's a little bit too expensive to be worth using the toxic blowpipe. Though if you did, I would go with probably Myth Darts. You could chip out for Addy too, but you're not making enough money back for it to be really worth it, though you could be doing this for Slayer Task, I guess. If you're doing it for Slayer Task, then you're on the Wilderness too, which changes things up. That's why I suggest using a magic short bow. You can imbue it, which makes the special attack cost less energy. It's not really 100% needed, but it's a nice boost for a low price if you're in the woodcutting guild. If you have a dragon axe or a crystal axe, though, you should probably just use that spec instead. And if you go into the wildy with it, you don't want to make uh, the magic short bow a lot more expensive and add more risk. So for the most part, you don't really need to imbue it. On the magic short bow, the amethyst arrows are going to crank through kills pretty quickly and really doesn't cost that much money. But these things are pretty easy to kill, and you spend more of your time chopping than you do killing them. So going down the list like Rune, Addy, Myth, Arrows, that can also get the job done fine and save you some money. You could also bring a crossbow, like a Rune crossbow. I guess if you had the Dragon or the Armor crossbow, you could bring that instead. But generally, it's probably a higher tier weapon than you're going with for the Ents. And as for bolts in the crossbow, I would suggest the Amethyst Broad Bolts, or just regular Broad Bolts if you don't have Amethyst. You could eventually do Mithril Bolts, which are weaker than Broad Bolts, but at least they're not as expensive as Addy Bolts. The Shield Slot is only going to matter if you're bringing a one-handed range weapon, like that crossbow option. So you're likely not bringing one, but if you are, the Twisted Buckler is the best range shield. After that, I would go with an Odium Ward, then a Book of Law, and any further down, I'd start using the Dragon Hide Shields. For your chest and legs, Arma is going to be best in slot, but... 
clearly is not needed. Crystal and Bless Dehi, they're both good options because they have that prayer bonus. So if you have them, you can use them. Though keep in mind, using Crystal Shards out here might not be great. Like, don't bring full Crystal Armor at this point, even though I've said that the armor isn't that bad. It's going to cost you a lot in Crystal Shards. I mean, if you got a ton of Crystal Shards, go ahead and use them. But just in general for chest and legs, I find Black Dehi to be fine. And if you're not high enough level for that, or for whatever reason don't have it, you could just go down the list with Red Dehide, Blue Dehide, and even Green Dehide. Barrow's gloves are best in slot for range, and I highly suggest working on those. Uh, if you don't have the Barrow's gloves yet, it's really good for account progress in general to get Recipe for Disaster done and get those Barrow's gloves. Uh, either way, though, you could just work with Blessed Dehyde or even the old Black Dehyde Van Braces. Pegasian boots are the best in slot boots, but they're insanely expensive thanks to Ranger boots. Definitely a lot more expensive than they are, like, a good upgrade. It's a good upgrade, but it shouldn't be as much as it is compared to the Blessed Dehyde or even, like, snakeskin boots. So in the Woodcutting Guild, if you have Pegasian boots, put them on. You might as well use them. But clearly for, like, wieldy options, Pegasian boots are not a good choice to bring out with you. For the ring slot, the Archer's Ring imbued is definitely the best option. The Brimstone Ring is a little bit better than an unimbued Archer's Ring. Uh, overall, you really don't have that many ring options. You could bring an Explorer's Ring out to the Wildy for an emergency run. I've really found that to be kind of a waste at this point. And Ring of Wealth doesn't help out here, so... Really not that many options for rings. Ents are not very strong, so your exact gear choices are not insanely important, but obviously the more damage that you can pour out on the monster, even a weak monster, the faster the kills are gonna be. If you still have any questions about gear, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, I try to speed through it as quick as I can, but also, I don't wanna just show one gear setup and say you gotta bring this, and that's it. There are two solid ways to go about grinding Ents in the Woodcutting Guild location. Since there is an altar right outside that you can restore prayer, you can easily just keep Protect from Melee on while you're fighting or chopping, and then restore between kills quickly. If you're using Melee instead of ranged, then the altar is pretty much a requirement, unless you're going to be flicking your prayers or using prayer potions. If you're using range, you'll generally be safe spotting the Ents, but you can also be attacked by another Ent while chopping the body of the one that you just killed. Again, there's an altar outside for just restoring your prayer. You could just keep Protect from Melee on. But after staying in the same area for 10 minutes, the Ents will become unaggressive and you won't have to deal with that anymore. There is a Runelite plugin called NPC Aggression Timer, which shows you aggression lines and gives you a timer of how long until the monsters are not aggressive anymore. Once you get the monster to a point that they're not aggressive, you really could just camp the Woodcutting Guild spot for as long as you want. I do suggest camping a general area and getting that aggression timer going uh, in terms of methods in the woodcutting guild, but of course, just going back out and constantly recharging your prayer does get the job done. You might want to bring a prayer pot or two for those first 10 minutes that you're trying to get the aggression timer down, but if you just flick your prayers, you could potentially get through it without any prayer potions at all. As far as I'm aware, the only Slayer task that you can get for Ents is the Will the Only task, but if you're here for a shorter period of time, not quite grinding a lot of kills, then using the nest outside the lair to restore prayer is probably a better option. You don't have to go through as much effort on the aggression timer and whatnot, but it's really easy to just hang out in the same spot and wait until they're not aggressive anymore and camp. All that being said, the process in here really is pretty easy, right? I've got my range gear, a dragon axe, though a crystal axe would speed things up a little bit more, and then I got minimal potions for a little bit of combat life. That's about it. You just KO an Ent, chop the body. If another Ent is attacking you, or one that you killed respawns and attacks you, Turn on Protect from Melee until you're done chopping, KO that Ents, and repeat. You could flick your prayers, saving a little bit of prayer and whatnot. You could always, like, it's still a little bit of a, a combat thing where you could try to save money on combat or, or really try to be super efficient, but uh, they're insanely easy to kill. That's about it for fighting Ents in the Woodcutting Guild. If you still have any questions on those methods, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. In terms of what to expect from loot from Woodcutting Guild Ents, uh, you have decent potential, especially compared to any other woodcutting method that's currently in the game. You do want high woodcutting, that way you'll be getting mostly magic logs, and there's a really nice jump from, like, magic logs with any other type of logs in terms of price, even when you're looking at U logs. You've also got the occasional bird's nest, which is not a lot of money, but it is going to add to the potential profit. Since you don't have the risk of the wilderness, and in general you don't have to bank often in the woodcutting guild, you can get a very consistent grind going, but you're still unlikely to make more than like 300 to 350k an hour at max pace, and that's with the current prices of logs, magic logs being right about 1k at this time. You're stuck to this pace for two different reasons. In general, log prices are not that good, so you need to chop a lot of logs to make a lot of money. And in the Woodcutting Guild, you get one noted log per chop, where in the Wilderness, you get two noted logs per chop. So you do get twice the pace out in the Wilderness, which makes more sense. Higher risk, higher reward. You can get like 15k XP an hour, which is not great, like I said before, but it will train your level over time and you can make some decent cash out of it. So it's one of the better woodcutting moneymakers. 
Alright, now we can move on to the wilderness method, which is not insanely different, to be fair. We can start by peeking at the gear again. I am not going to go back over each spot, so if you would like that info, I point you back to that section of the guide, which should be timestamped something like woodcutting guild gear. For the wildy, you want to limit yourself down to like three expensive items, or at least more expensive items. It doesn't have to be three really expensive things, but don't bring more than three expensive items is the idea. You could bring a fourth if you're confident in your ability not to get smited, and it is pretty easy to not get smited if you have any sort of prayer restoration left. But just don't bring expensive stuff out there and you won't lose expensive stuff. I have cut my gear down to this. Uh, the two expensive things really that I'm keeping, the Necklace of Anguish and the Ava's Assembler. It does happen that the Dragon Axe right now gets kept, and the item that I could get smited for if my Protect from Item doesn't end up working for me. Uh, it's just my archer's helmet, so the risk you're seeing here is a little bit under 100k. This could give or take depending on how many arrows I'm bringing out with me. Uh, this screenshot doesn't have a ranging potion in it, which is only like 1k, but still, uh, somewhere around 100k risk is a little bit more than you need in some ways for something that's not making a lot of money, but you make more than that back like it's really that's a fine risk at the same time a lot of that comes down to how confident you are though if you're not so confident bring less stuff if you're really confident out there then bring more expensive solid gear so i also downgraded my barrows gloves to black dehyde my helm is that archer's helm and then i don't even bring the explorer's ring at this point because i feel like it's never used sometimes choosing your gear for the wildy can be a tough choice with the added risks so if you still have any questions about which pieces of gear to bring over others be sure to leave those in the comment section below but i'm going to leave the gear at that before you go into the wilderness go in your in-game options click the tab with the little gear on it it's the control settings switch your player attack options to hidden this is not a requirement, but it, I, it's going to guarantee that you don't attack somebody you don't want to and get skull tricked. Anyone who's ever been skull tricked, this option would have saved you. There's two different locations to fight Ents in the Wilderness. There's one right outside the Corp Cave, and the other one's a little bit further southeast. The Ents in the Wilderness are a little bit easier to safe spot while chopping. Like, you don't always have another Ent on you while chopping, though you still get attacked occasionally. But you don't need to pray for them as much, and the aggro strategy still works and is still suggested. You should still bring some potions and healing stuff just in case PKers come out for you. No matter which of the two spots you use, that is always going to be a thing. Usually a Stamina, two Brews, and a Restore is what I add to my Envy for really most wildy activities if i feel like i'm going to be running from pkers i just throw those four potions in there you also are going to want to bring a teleport out the royal seed pod is perfect but uh both of these spots are low enough wildy you could potentially just have like a house tab and be fine i suggest using the spot near the like black salamanders and like the uh the chaos elder druids or whatever or the elder chaos druids i should say they had that a little backwards there's a lot less traffic meaning there's gonna be less pkers and there's not black unicorns out there which aren't that much of a nuisance but can get in the way a little bit so it's just a little bit more convenient of a spot it is helpful that the corp cave is closer to its teleport the game's necklace brings you right there but in general, it's not that much of a trip for the burning amulet to bring you over to the other ends. Also, the other ends are lower level wilderness. You can fight them in like level 9 wilderness, which does make them a lot less riskier. For the most part, not that many PKers are going to show up, but there's always PKers eventually. How long that you want to stay in a spot before banking your logs is really a judgment call on you. For the most part, you can bring enough supplies that you can last longer than you would need to last. Like you would want to go to a bank by that time anyway because you're risking too many logs on you and also you could bring like a looting bag but the same things that happen where you, you, the problem with extending trips is not going to be like envy space or food it's gonna be the fact that you now have a lot of logs on you you should probably bank them before you get pk'd if you care a little bit more about your slayer task maybe than the amount of money you're making you could go a little bit longer i would try not to get more than like an hour's worth of logs without banking it because it really sucks to do a full hour's worth of uh, of money making push it for another five minutes and lose all of that but it kind of judge it on the night too if you've been going like three hours in a row of banking at the hour and you've yet to see a single pk -er, you could probably push it more if you got like 30 minutes in three different times you keep getting pk like dude you got to be banking sooner so it's a little bit of a judgment call the loot table in the wildy is the same as the woodcutting guild but there's two different mechanics out here for one you're getting two noted logs per chop out in the wildy which doubles your pace during the chopping portion of the activity uh, it doesn't double the pace of the whole activity you still got to kill the ants there's always bank trips in there and whatnot uh, also if you get the medium wilderness diaries done though you get a 15 percent better chance to successfully chop logs from the dead ends which increases your payload a little bit overall 
With those numbers in mind, getting something like 500 to 600k plus an hour is doable. Uh, keeping that at a consistent pace is not as easy because for one, it's, it's pretty max pace. You want to be like 95 plus wood cutting to be getting 600 plus k an hour. And that would be not seeing a PKer for the full hour, which not that you're never going to get a full hour, but that's what I mean by inconsistent. If you go for three or four hours, you, eventually someone's probably going to show up. Look, you could get six, 10, 12 hours, things happen, but you could go 10 minutes before someone shows up too. So you're not going to get consistent good hours, but it, the potential is here compared to any other money makers. Actually, the potential is huge. Uh, excuse me, compared to any other wood cutting money makers. In general, I've been throwing down these numbers for max pace, but if you're not like 99 wood cutting and you don't have good gear, you're clearly not getting max pace. You're probably getting more like 10K wood cutting XP an hour, making a few hundred K GP, which is pretty solid, but you got to keep this in mind when you're doing ends. It. Like, it's a wood cutting moneymaker. Wood cutting moneymakers are not good. And that brings me into, I guess, general thoughts on this. Uh, it has good money making potential for a wood cutting moneymaker. I had made a whole video about how bad wood cutting moneymakers are and whatnot, so I had to give this one a little bit of credit because you can actually make some solid cash out of this if you spend the time doing it. It also gives a little bit different gameplay than just straight up chopping trees. It's still mostly chopping trees. You'll find that it is pretty AFK out there. But in general, it's a little bit of variety, and I'm a fan of that. Overall, since the price of logs are just really bad, it's hard for woodcutting moneymakers to make a lot of money. That's just all there is to it. Uh, and I guess this is a different problem, a different conversation in its own about why the woodcutting prices are bad. That's part of the other woodcutting video I made that said it was called Don't Make Money With Woodcutting. Personally, I would use different skills to make money and not try to make money with woodcutting. There's always end slayer tasks, and this at least gives an option for making money with woodcutting. So this option is out there. That is going to wrap up this end guide, though, everybody. I do appreciate you watching. If you still have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, which the link should be in the description, and I am on Twitter and have a Discord, which are also linked in the description. Thanks again for watching this Ent Guide, everybody, and best of luck with your wood-cutting money-making games.